talking. I can understand her and I can understand the recommendation of the anger management course. I don't, I'm not familiar with changing directions, but um, having to do both again, appears to be excessive. Um, and in letter I, he talks about maintaining legitimate employment. Um, as I said earlier, she is either has one or two jobs. Uh, the restitution also is in question. When I read the police report initially, uh, there is some damage caused by my client uh, with by using the, the BB, BB pistol. And now she is claiming that there's some additional damage to a door seal. Well, that kind of damage doesn't happen uh, as a result of getting pinged by some BBs. Um, initially, the restitution was capped out at $400. And now it appears that the victim here is trying to um, overreach in getting her car completely you know, fixed at the cost of, of my client. All that being said, it just appears, as I said a couple of times now, it just appears to be excessive and a little bit heavy handed given the nature of who my client is, what she is, where she's come from, and who she is maintaining today. So I would ask the court to, to lower the fines and costs, lessen the, the number of months of probation, um, the alcohol and drug testing or not having any contact with it, I don't believe to be necessary. I would ask for that to be deleted and the restitution be capped at $400. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anything you'd like to say today, Ms. Crawford, prior to sentencing? Yes, um, I do apologize for everything that's happened and we shouldn't even be here in my eyes. Um, I am very embarrassed. I, I would like to apologize to the courts. I would like to apologize to the victim, but in saying what my, I agree with my lawyer that I feel that it, the sentencing recommendation was a little over the top. All right. Well, I believe that the reason for the sentencing recommendation was some statements that you made during the interview process that seemed to suggest that you don't fully understand the nature of the situation here. And uh, based on what's in this report, there was some concern that you weren't taking responsibility for what had happened and were, was more blaming um, the victim in this case. Mm. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It's not that I'm not taking responsibility. It's the fact that what's going on is still ongoing. Um, I've been forcibly removed from my apartment, forced to stay in a hotel for three weeks. In that, in that time, I have been robbed staying in hotels. Miss Clay has stalked me. She has called friends. I mean, it's been ongoing. I've been sleepless for weeks. And I mean, it was a little hard for me to have remorse because it was still going on. And I've called the police numerous times. It doesn't seem to matter. I mean, I've called police before the situation happened. It didn't matter. I call police now, it didn't matter. I can't protect myself. So at this point, I am at a loss. I don't know what to do. I guess I understand I have to follow the laws. I have to follow the court's recommendation in uh, sentencing, but I'm still at a loss because if this continues on, I'm gonna end up in jail or prison or whatever. And I have no say so about it. How many times have you called the police since you've been in your hotel now? Um, in the hotel, I called, first I called uh, my lawyer. Um, I called twice. I think the court needs to have more of a background on what's going on in this case before sentencing actually. Um, if this is an ongoing situation, I wanna have a full understanding of that prior to imposing sentencing. Um, there are additional police reports arising between these two parties. 
Mr. Piotrowski, are you aware of that? I'm not aware of any police reports. Um, my client is accurate that when it was reoccurring while she was at the hotel room, she did call me. She, would, she, she realized that she was on bond and you know, we were both kind of at wit's end uh, as what to do. Um, I, I, my recommendation, I believe it was just to call the police and she did. Um, but you know, this, I'd like to say it's over, but I don't know if it is. There should at least be a um, incident report, a yep. call for service on these matters. And I'd like to see that prior okay. to say. Um, you know, ma'am, one of my concerns in reviewing this case, and I read it really thoroughly, was that your mom had indicated that you were having some concerns with this neighbor, but the mom didn't understand what your concerns were. So all of that is a part of what's concerning to this court about the nature of this particular case. Um, I am hearing your attorney when your attorney indicates uh, that you know he's trying to cap the restitution. However, this court needs to be very uh, considerate of the actual damage that was done. And, um, I don't have in my record a, an agreement for capping of the restitution. I believe he's referring to what was indicated by a police officer in the police report, which is very different than having uh, a capped agreement to restitution. So um, there is reference in the police report to the, the damage that was done to the door seal, whether it was caused by this particular um, situation or not, is something that the court would hear at a restitution hearing. So I just want you to understand that I'm listening to you and I'm listening to your attorney. So given that, I really need to have a better understanding of what's happening prior to imposing any type of sentence on this. So I'm gonna request that uh, Mr. Piotrowski, you provide our, my probation department with a copy of any call for service requests. Um, and that's with respect to uh, while she's been in the hotel and prior to that, I really wanna understand the full totality of the circumstances here. Yes, Your Honor. So I'll bring you back for sentencing on August 12th, ma'am. Why, um, and I don't know if you're able to say, and maybe you should talk to your attorney about this before you actually say anything, but I want to know why um, you've been forcibly removed, as you just indicated, from your apartment for the past three weeks. Um, after first arraignment, uh, we received a seven day notice afterwards and we vacated the home within seven days on the 13th we were out all right so in other words you were served with a seven-day notice to quit based on this violation of their lease rules and you were then you you moved from the premises correct okay thank you all right if I could get that additional information, I would appreciate that, please. Mm -hmm. August 12, 2021 at 10 a.m. First sentencing. You are not to put more burden on Mr. Heaton, but would it be easier for Mr. Heaton to get those incident reports rather than myself? It might be easier for you, <laughs> but no, right, I'm right. to sorry, Ted. Get those, please. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll be on August 12th. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. State of Michigan versus Kenneth Woodard, 20 FB 1745 FY. All right, well, I'm going to be happy to people. Good morning, Your Honor. Ayanna Alcindor appearing on behalf of Mr. Woodard. Good morning, Your Honor. Kenneth Woodard. Hello, Mr. Woodard. Good morning. All right, we're scheduled for sentencing today. Yes, Your Honor. And I have had the opportunity to review the evaluation and recommendation with Mr. Woodard. Um, there are a few minor uh, revisions or corrections. Mr. Woodard's middle name is incorrect on the 
screening and assessment report. His middle name is Emil, not Earl. Um, there's also some uh, in incorrect statements related to his uh, siblings. He has 10 siblings. I think 11 was indicated in the report. Also, Can one of his please siblings- give me are, the page numbers you were referencing to, please? Yes, I, I does appear to have page numbers, but I guess you're gonna have to count. Um, <laughs> The cover page of the assessment report has the um, incorrect middle name. All right, thank you. Um, let's see here. I do see that, and you're saying it's email. How you spell that, please? E M I L. Thank you. And then it says sub ship, sub ship third of ten. Yes, uh, further down in the report. It indicates 11. Which page are you referring to now? Um, it might have been. I'm sorry, I did not know where I saw that. I see um, in the biographical summary, it says third of 10. I would need for you to specifically point to where so that I can make a correction. I apologize, Your Honor. I think the report is correct with the number of siblings. Okay, thank you so much. Additional mm -hmm. corrections? Um, no, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Prior to sentencing, Ms. Willenbring, is there anything you would like to, to uh, add for the court? Nothing additional from the people, Your Honor. Thank you so very much. As to the recommendation, Ms. Alexander. I would like to bring to the court's attention and it's uh, indicated in the evaluation and the report that Mr. Woodard has been open and honest. He takes full responsibility for what has happened. Um, and on his own um, initiative, he, has, he began AA meetings in March of this year and continues to attend those meetings. Um, he recognizes that this, this incident is not something that is uh, typical of his behavior. This is his first and only um, substance abuse, uh, substance related offense. Um, and we'd ask the court to take that into consideration and depart from the recommendation of 18 months to uh, 12 months of probation. Ms. Um, Alexander, I think, you know, and I'd like for you to address this if you could, part of what I was really concerned about in this case was um, what could have happened. Um, the allegation is, and he's pled to, you know, the drinking and driving piece, but that the allegation is that he was going at a high rate of speed and basically flew through the uh, roundabout, which caused the damage to the tires that I was actually able to see um, in pictures. That's extremely concerning to me. Um, I don't know you know, he has, I did read in a report that he's been extremely open and honest and, and I'm looking at him. He seems very remorseful for what happened. But a part of what the court is concerned about is understanding how it happened. So I don't know if you can address that. Like what, what was the, based on the history that he's given, this seems to be a unusual circumstance. How did he come about getting in this unusual position 
where he put so many people in danger is what I want to understand. Um, Your Honor, I, I don't know. Um, Mr. Woodard, would you like to address the court? If that's... Yes, um, I know it was a terrible... It was a terrible decision on my behalf. Um, like I stated in the report before, it was the first time getting back with each other. I'm usually very responsible, as you can see, my my accomplishments I've done throughout my life here to the to the day in question, to the day of my offense. So, um, like it's, I'm I'm very sorry for putting you know Washington, Ypsilanti, everybody in the even the, the witnesses that they experience their life because every day I live the same way. This cautious like. I can't believe I did that. Even to the even a whole year later, I'm still in the same mindset. Like I can't believe that happened. And I honestly, even my career profession, I work on people who've been in car accidents, um, car accident victims. So to look at it today, I'm very remorseful, I'm very um, thankful that I ain't hurt nobody or hurt myself. And like I like to send my sincere apologies to you all, to the county, and to the, to the people that lives are indefinitely affected. So how did you end up making this choice that day, Mr. Woodard? Honestly, my first choice was to lay down. But um, honestly, I received a, um, a contact from a friend and that honestly just woke me up and I was I felt that I was able to drive at that point. I was like, okay, a couple of air driving the air is gonna wake me up, I'm gonna be fine. And that was not the case. It was very irresponsible on my part and I um, regret it to this day. Sure. Um, there is one correction that needs to be made um, to the recommendation piece of the report. Yeah, it has that there is 180 days jail credit for 180 days. That should be credit for zero. Um, you didn't, did you spend any time in custody, Mr. Witter? Um, about a, a 12 hour hold. So it should actually be credit for one. Um, Ms. Elsinder, I'm not certain that you had finished your uh, statement regarding the recommendation before I ask the question. Is there anything else additional you'd like to say on behalf of your client? Um, only to add that uh, although Mr. Woodard's actions are inexplicable and there's no justification for what happened. He is taking the steps now, Your Honor, um, and has done so since October of last year to um, make sure that this does not happen again. Thank you. I too have, as you can tell, reviewed the pre-sentence investigation report, the assessment, as well as the police report with respect to this matter. Um, and I find that the recommendation is fair and I intend to follow it. Um, it is a sentence of the court that you serve 180 days in the Washtenaw County Jail, credit for one day served. 179 of those days are suspended, which means that if you do what you're supposed to do, sir, you don't have to do any additional jail time. Yeah, absolutely. I am going to send issue to 18 months on probation based on the nature of the offense here. Um, and there was not an accident because of the grace of God, because a car had to swerve to be missed. So based on that, I am going to uh, send issue to probation. I believe that it is necessary for rehabilitation at this time and protection of the community. You are to do 10 days on the jail work program, fines and costs in this particular case of $725, $30 per month of uh, probation oversight fees to complete the break in the cycle, substance use education and highway safety class, attend the MAD victim impact panel, meet with probation when and where directed. There's no use or possession of alcohol, marijuana, legal drugs or paraphernalia and no being in the presence of anyone possessing or using those. No use or possession of any firearm, firearm components, ammunition, or other dangerous weapons. I'm going to have you drug and alcohol test three times per month and any other times as ordered by the court or probation or any police agency. 
it's my understanding you, based on what your attorney just said, you're already attending um, AA meetings. Is that correct? Cor- correct. Yeah. For the whole year with um, working and going back and forth to work. And um, since recently, since two weeks ago, I've been suspended and I've been able to work. So I would like to um, hopefully get something. I can get back to work. I, tra- I usually travel to in home, like I mentioned before. Unfortunately, the court does not control the driver's uh, license. Okay. Um, that is completely up to the Secretary of State. And the repercussions with respect to a plea to a high BAC, um, I believe that there is a hard suspension. Uh, I don't have that in front of me at this time. I think it's a 30 day hard suspension. Uh, Ms. Willenbring, do you know? I don't know off the top of my head, but I can confirm that information. All right, thank you. Mr. Heaton, are you aware of what the hard suspension is? I I have a one year suspension um, with restricted license available after 45 days with the interlock device. Right. So it's a hard suspension for 45 days. Hard suspension means that you can't get a restricted until you've completed that portion of it. So the hard suspension is for 45 days, sir. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You need to uh, call the probation department and um, reach out to your agent. You have that phone number, correct, Mr. Wood? I believe I do. All right, do you need it again? I'll take it, yes, to make sure. 734-483-7336. And he's going to have to uh, go over your probation contract with you and get that signed so that you understand what your requirements are. Okay, sir? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Thank you. You Thank you. Thank you. State of Michigan versus Heather Speck, case number 21 S00226. Good morning, Your Honor. Deborah Schlossel on behalf of the defendant, Heather Speck. Your Honor, please forgive my background. I happen to be in the hospital as a patient, and uh, that's why there's a bed, and so forgive me. Thank you. I hope you're okay, Ms. Well, I hope so, too, Your Honor, and thank you. We'll find out. I'm being tested to death, so one of those tests, God willing, we'll find out, and hopefully it's something treatable. Thank you. All right, we're here for a pretrial. Yes, Your Honor, I have had the opportunity to look over the discovery. I've received all of it from the prosecutor, and we have discussed a plea agreement in this matter. And forgive me, Your Honor, I've been in the hospital since Sunday and have had this issue since a week ago yesterday. And so I have not signed or submitted any advice of rights on my client's behalf or the plea agreement, but I told the prosecutor that she could sign my name to that. And your honor, we would be happy to put the advice of rights on the record if that would suffice. All right, do you wanna proceed with this today, ma'am? Or do you need an adjournment? Uh, Your honor, I and my client would both like to proceed. Thank you. And thank you for giving us that opportunity. All right, thank you. What, um, if someone could place the plea agreement on the record, please. Yes, Your Honor, the people have offered um, operating while visibly impaired. Um, if Ms. Speck pleads uh, to this count, the original count one operating while intoxicated will be dismissed. 
That is a true statement, Your Honor, and of what we've been offered and what we have agreed to accept. Thank you. All okay. right, Ms. Speck, um, you heard the plea that was placed on the record by your attorney and the prosecutor that if you pled to operating while visibly impaired, which is a misdemeanor carrying a maximum of 93 days and or $300 fine, that this matter would the more serious offense of operating while intoxicated would be dismissed. Do you understand that, ma'am? Yes, it, Your Honor. Is that what you're choosing to do today? Yes, it is. Please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. I do. Thank you. I'm going to go over your advice of rights uh, with you uh, so that that is on the record. And then uh, you and your attorney can submit the actual form uh, at a later date. I need you to submit that. Uh, as soon as your attorney is able to do so. Thank okay. you, Your Honor. Your Honor, can I ask the court if uh, the clerk, clerk can, in the text, put the email address to which I should send it? Well, the way it works um, is a little bit simpler than that. You can, oh. your client, just go online to the 14B District Court, and there should be a form in that section, or you can go for her, and in that section, you will, uh, in, on the website, you will see that there's a form that she can go on and click into and fill out in the sense of directly back to the court. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Then I can go over that with her today. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to go over the rights that you're going to be giving up today. Okay, ma'am? You have the right to a trial by a jury. You have the right to have the assistance of an attorney. You have the right to call witnesses to speak for you at trial. You can get an order signed by the court to require that the witnesses come to court. You have the right to see, hear, and question all witnesses against you at trial. You have the right to be a witness for yourself, or you could choose to remain silent. If you chose to remain silent, the prosecutor could not comment on that. You have the right to be presumed innocent unless proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you understand all those rights? I do. You understand you're going to be giving up all those rights with the exception of your attorney. You'll get to keep your attorney through the sentencing phase. Yes, I do. If you enter into this plea today, there is no automatic right to appeal this. Do you understand that, ma'am? Yes, I do. In addition to that, if you're on probation or parole, then um, this could be considered a violation of that. Do you understand that? I do. Thank you. Um, are there any immigration consequences that we need to be concerned about? No, Your no. Honor. Thank you. To the charge of operating while visibly impaired, how do you plead today? Guilty. Thank you. Anyone promise you anything that has not been placed on the record to get you to plead guilty? No. Anyone threaten or coerce you to get you to plead guilty? No, Your Honor. Thank you. I will now turn to the date of offense. On April the 10th of 2021, were you in the vicinity of West Michigan Ave and North Huron Street in Ypsilanti Township? Yes. And were you driving at that time, ma'am? Yes. Prior to driving, had you been drinking? Yes, Your Honor. What did you have to drink? Um, I had two margaritas with my food at the restaurant. Thank you. Was there a... Uh, Blood alcohol test in this case or breathalyzer? Um, two breathalyzers. What were the results, please? Um, it was 0.15 on both of them. Is that accurate, counselors? It is, Your Honor, and we stipulate to that. Thank you. You're welcome. I find that there's a factual basis for the plea and that it has been normally and willingly made. Are you satisfied, Ms. Willingbrin? Yes, Your Honor. Satisfied, Your Honor. Thank you. Welcome. Sentencing will be in five weeks. August 12, 2021 at 10 a.m. In the meantime, ma'am, you need to contact the probation department to schedule an appointment to have an assessment done. Okay. Do you have the phone number? Um, 
if you I would like it, that would be great. Okay. You ready for it now? Yes, sir. 734-483-7336. Thank you. So you need to call them as soon as possible because you have to fill out some paperwork as well as send it back to them via snail mail. So it takes some time. You need to get that done as soon as possible because if you come back here and it's not done, you have to explain to me why. And it is a condition of your bond. So it'd be a bond violation. Do you understand, ma'am? Yes, I do. Bond is continued on the condition that you complete the assessment and return here for sentencing. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, count one is dismissed. Have a good Thank day. you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. State of Michigan versus Maya Hughes, case number 18S00598. Horrible Lindbergh on behalf of the people. Andrew Bannis. Hello. Hello. I'm here. Hi, Ms. Hughes. Andrew Bannis on be with and on behalf of Ms. Hughes, who is present. Thank you so very much. <laughs> All right. Hello, Ms. Hughes. How are you, ma'am? Okay. All right. We're here for a pre-trial today. <laughs> I do believe we have a resolution of this matter. The offer is to plead guilty to count one and in exchange count two will be dismissed. That's correct, Your Honor. <laughs> I discussed with Ms. Hughes um, and she does wish to plead guilty today and uh, she'd be pleading guilty to, there are two counts of R&O attempt. So she'd be pleading guilty to one and the other will be dismissed. All right, thank you. Yes, Ms. Hughes, you did tell me you would come. <clears throat> so Ms. Hughes, it's my understanding that you're gonna plead to count one, which is a charge of police officer assaulting and resisting and obstructing attempt. It is a misdemeanor carrying a maximum of one year in the Washtenaw County Jail and or $1,000 plus court costs. Okay. Now, two, which is the same charge would be dismissed. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Is that your understanding of what you're gonna do today? Yes, because I was under the influence and I'm well aware of the things that I have did and I apologize for that, but that's why I'm taking responsibility for what I did that day. Thank you. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Please raise your right hand to be sworn. Yes. Do you yes. swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, Ms. Hughes? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, I'm gonna go over your advice of rights with you again so that you understand the rights you're giving up today by taking responsibility and pleading guilty, okay? okay? You have the right to have a trial by a jury. You have the right to the assistance of an attorney. You have an attorney that has been appointed for you, and that is Mr. Andrew Bannis. You have the right to call witnesses to speak to you at trial, and you can get an order signed by the court to require that they come to court. You have the right to see, hear, and question all witnesses against you at trial and to be a witness for yourself or to remain silent. If you chose to remain silent, the prosecutor could not comment on that. In addition to that, you have the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you understand those rights, Ms. Hughes? Yes, ma'am. All right, you understand you're gonna be giving up all those rights with the exception of your attorney. Yes. Right. And, um, if you were on probation or parole right now, this could be considered a violation of that. Do you understand that, ma'am? Yes. Are you on probation or parole? 
No. All right, thank you. And you won't have an automatic right to appeal this. So the decision you're making today is a decision that will pretty much stick with you unless the court grants leave. And that's not freely given. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, are there any immigration consequences that we need to be concerned about? No. All right, good. To the charge of attempted police officer resisting and obstructing, how do you plead, ma'am? Guilty. All right, we're going to turn to the date of offense. Um, before we get there, has anyone promised you anything that has not been placed on the record to get you to plead guilty? No. Anyone threaten you in any way to get you to do that, this, Ms. Hughes? No, ma'am. Okay. No, ma All right. So back on June 14th of 2018, ma'am, were you in the vicinity of 1733 Dover Court in Ypsilanti Township? Yes. And at that time, did you come into contact with the one Deputy Herbis? Yes. And at that time, did you assault or batter or wound Deputy Erbis? Um, I think I might have pushed him. I can't really tell you what happened that day because I was like under the influence, but I think I might have pushed him. Okay. <clears throat> oh, Ms. Willenbrink? Your Honor, I have no objection to a no contest plea that might be more appropriate in this matter given lack of recollection from Ms. Hughes. I now, I now see that 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 does appear to be more appropriate, Your Honor. Um, could we pass this? What, uh, Ms. Willenbring, would it, how easy it is, is it, would it be for you to get the police report? I, I can do it also. It's, I have to find it. I can do that right now. Okay. You can send it directly to me. You don't have to send it through um, the recorder as long as you um, put Mr. Bannis on that email as well. Thank you, Your Honor. I just sent that over. Thank you. It hasn't arrived just yet. All right, it just made it way to me. All right. <laughs> Give me one moment to review it. I'm reviewing case report number 18-45. 434, date of offense, August 14, 2018, at uh, 1733 Dover Court, which is in the Pulani Township. Yes.
All right, on this particular day, police officers were called to uh, the address in Dover Court in order to make an arrest of Ms. Hughes based on the allegation of a separate incident involving a felonious assault, allegedly. And uh, Ms. Hughes was in the address. She was given direction to exit the um, home uh, through the open back door after repeated commands, she refused to exit and the officers went in to remove her from the home. Um, Officer Herbs went to place her hands behind her back. And at that time, when he grabbed a hold of her right arm, she pulled away from him and then pushed him, allegedly swung at uh, him with her left hand and continued to fight and pull away from him at that time and she had to be taken down. Um, in order to be arrested. I find that there's a factual basis for the plea and that it was knowingly and willingly made. Um, Ms. Willenbring, are you satisfied? Yes, Your Honor, the people are satisfied. The defense is satisfied, Your Honor, and just for the record, I, I, I know it's clear, but we are requesting no contest plea based on lack of recollection. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is an older matter. I do need to just understand what the status of things are right now. Um, I know that I arranged um, Ms. Hughes back on the second, and I know she's got a lot of things going on, especially with her child. How is your child, Ms. Hughes? Oh, he's okay. He's right. He's on a couch sleep right now. Okay. So this thing in this matter will be four weeks out. August 5th, 2021 at 10 a.m. Okay. Your, your bond is continued, Ms. Hughes, okay? Okay. You need to make and keep an appointment with the probation department. Do you have the phone number, ma'am? No. Do you have a pen? Yes, ma'am. All right. 734-483-7336. Uh -huh. Okay. You need to call them today and schedule that appointment. It's a condition of your bond that you make and keep that appointment, okay? Okay. And you have to return back here on August 5th at 10 a.m., ma'am, okay? Okay, I got it all written down. All right, thank you. I'll see you then. Thank you, thank you ma'am. Court will call the case of the state of Michigan versus Deborah Clark, 21S00148. Cora Willenberg on behalf of the people. Good morning, Your Honor. Nor Corey on behalf of Deborah Clark. Good morning. How are you, Ms. Clark? Good. How are you, Judge? Pretty good. Is Ms. Clark present? She is. She's in the, she's in the, yes. Uh, um, Deborah, she, can you turn on your camera? Her camera's off, Your Honor. I see her. Well, before we get um, any further into this particular matter, today is the day of time scheduled for sentencing in this matter. However, we don't have the restitution amounts um, from um, the Huron Valley. And in cases like this, it's important that we have those numbers up front so that we know what's going on and Ms. Um, Clark can fully understand the requests while we deal with the surrender of the animals issue. So we need to have that documentation and those numbers up front on this type of a sentencing. I understand your honor. All right. Mr. Heaton, do you know how soon you'll be able to get that, those numbers from um, Huron Valley? I would think probably within a week, Your Honor. I'll put this one over to the 29th so that you can get that documentation and be able to provide it to uh, Ms. Corey and to her client so that they can discuss this because we will be addressing whether the animals will be surrendered. I don't think that she has 
fully uh, made a commitment as to what her position is on that. And we wanna have the final number so that she can look at those. Okay. Um, yeah, I would not, I don't want to surrender them. Mm -hmm. But I, like you said, we don't have the full information, I don't believe, but I don't want to give them up. I, I understood you to probably say that, Ms. Clark. Okay. okay. All right. Um, so September 29th, 2021 at 10 a.m. September, Your Honor. I'm sorry. I don't know how I just said that. July. Okay. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll be there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. On this continue. We call in the case of State of Michigan versus Heather Speck, 21 S226. Horrible Good morning. Of the people. I'm sorry. Good morning, Your Honor. Deborah Sulsa on behalf of the defendant, Heather Speck, who is back on the Zoom video call. We waive any objections to Zoom. Your Honor, I apologize for coming back on Zoom, but in my all the stress of what's going on with me, I was remiss in forgetting that. My client did remind me that she wanted to ask the court if her testing conditions can be reduced from two times per week to one. The reason being that she has not tested positive on any of them. She has fully compli complied with all bond conditions. Um, and Your Honor, she is um, a very limited income and the issue of the cost and also of her work schedule is what is making it hard for her. And so we are asking the court to consider that. Response from the people, please. Your Honor, I don't have any uh, reports from Community Corrections. Um, if Ms. Speck has uh, been testing negative consistently since the time of this incident. I have no objection to reducing her testing to one time per week. Ms. Speck has been testing negative since um, I placed the alcohol testing on her on June 17th. So it's only been a few weeks that she has been testing. Um, however, is there any input from um, probation on this? So I don't think they know who it's going to be assigned to yet. Mr. Heaton? Um, no, Your Honor, I don't have any, any concern with that. All right, thank you. Um, I will reduce testing to once per week. Thank you, Your Honor. And again, I apologize for wasting the court's time with an additional appearance this morning. All right, we're all set. Thank you. I hope you uh, get everything figured out over there, Ms. Wessel. Okay. Thank you so much, Your Honor. I appreciate that. Thank you. Day. All right. Thank you. Thank you. State of Michigan versus Demetrius Curry, case number 20S00633. Horrible Lindbergh on behalf of the people. And DeMonte, no request and permission to appear under Michigan Court Rule 8.120 under the supervision of Assistant Public Defender Andrew Bannis. Permission is granted. Hello, Mr. Curry. Hello. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. So, Your Honor, we... Sir, if you're driving, you're going to need to pull over. No, I'm going to pull over now. All right, thank you. All right, I got to get, get on this side, on the other side. Mr. Noble? Yes, Your Honor, we're here for a pretrial, and I was able to speak to Mr. Carey about his constitutional right to a jury trial and even his right if he decided to waive for a bench trial. And after an extensive conversation, Mr. Carey has decided to plead guilty to count one as charged. All right. I'm pulling over now, Your Honor. I'm trying to get right, across the highway. Thank you. Okay. Do it safely. Carey, okay. I'm good. Okay, 
Montgomery. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Curry, it's my understanding that you're gonna plead guilty as charged in this particular case. The allegations are that uh, you committed the misdemeanor of child abuse fourth, which is a maximum of one year in the Washtenaw County Jail and um, probation up to five years. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, ma'am. Is that what you wish to do today, sir? Yes, ma'am. All right, please raise your right hand to be sworn. You swear firmly to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, ma'am, I do. Thank you. I want to go over some rights you're going to be giving up by pleading guilty today, sir, okay? Uh-huh. It appears that you saw the magistrate back on May 11th of 2021. And yes. at that time, he went over these rights with you, but I'm going to go over them with you in a, uh, at least the more major ones, Okay. Okay. You have the right to have a trial by jury and to have the assistance of an attorney. You have the right to call witnesses to speak to you at trial and you can get an order signed by the court to require the witnesses come to court. You have the right to see, hear, and question all witnesses against you at trial. You have the right to be a witness for yourself or to remain silent. And if you chose to remain silent, then the prosecutor could not comment on that. You have the right to be presumed innocent unless proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, yes ma'am. You're going to be giving up all those rights with the exception of your attorney. You'll get to keep your attorney through the sentencing phase. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. If you're on probation or parole at this time, it can be considered a violation of those. Are you on probation or parole? I'm on parole. All right. Well, this could be considered a violation of your parole. Do you understand that, sir? I already, um, I already was in the M MDOC and served the violation on this matter already with them. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um. There will not be an automatic right to appeal this case. You understand that piece, sir? Yes, yes ma'am. Mm -hmm. And uh, based on what you just said, I take it there are no immigration consequences that you need to be worried about? No. To the charge of child abuse in the fourth degree, how do you plead, sir? Guilty. Does anyone promise you anything that has not been placed on the record to get you to plead guilty? No. Anyone threaten you in any way? No. All right. On the date of uh, between July 18th of 2020 and August 10th of 2020, um, were you in the vicinity of 247 South Fork Road? Yes, ma'am. And was there a child there that uh, you hit in the chest? Yes, my son. You hit your son. All right. And he's, he's nine years old? He's 10 now. He's 10 now. Okay. He's coming up to you in this month. Okay. Do you understand or agree that that uh, force was excessive um, at the time and it created a, a risk of harm to him? Your Honor, and being honest, I... I I, I was calling myself disciplined in my son. My son had a situation where he kept defecating on himself, defecating on himself. And as a father, I took him and showed him what to do. I showed him how to wash himself. I showed him how to, you know, take care of things if he had an accident. Once he got his phone in the remote control car, because he was doing good for a while, at least a week, two weeks. And once he got his stuff, he started back to slip again. So I punched him in his chest. All right. So... Mr. Bannis, I think your client is indicating that he believes that that was a disciplinary defense. I was going to ask for a breakout room, Your Honor, to discuss the parental discipline defense with him. Um, and then um, and we'll come back and make our request on how to proceed after that. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. And if Mr. Noble could come in too, that'd be helpful. Thank you. We will pass this matter.
court will call the state of Michigan versus Cornelius Williams, case number 19 S00029. Honorable Lambert, on behalf of the people. I'm here, Your Honor. All right. How are you today, Mr. Williams? Fine, and yourself? I'm pretty good. We're here today um, for show calls in a pretrial. Oh, okay. Second, I'm trying to figure out um, I did not write why you're here for a show call. I'm not certain why I wrote show cross, to be honest. Um, it appears that it's a matter in which you were here back on April the 15th and that you were supposed to be working on your, getting your license cleared up. Is that correct, sir? Yes. How's that going? Horrible. Horrible? Yes. Why? Because I, they, 36th District Court I went up there to try to take care of my warrants back in February. And they let me put down some money. Like half of what I owed for my warrant, which was it was eleven hundred and some change. And I put down five hundred and ninety-eight and forty-eight cents. I'm looking at Christy right now. And um I went back up there like a month later to pay the remainder balance. And they told me it was 1050. And I showed them the other receipt because all I had was a picture of the receipt. And they told me like, I must've paid on some tickets. I didn't pay my warrants. Pay on no warrants because I couldn't pay on no warrants. I had to pay the whole balance. Mm -hmm. I couldn't make a payment. And I, I I asked him then, where did my 598 and 40 cent go? And he said, it must have been some tickets, which I didn't have any tickets because I paid all my tickets. All I had left was warrants. <laughs> and the last judge that I seen for a different ticket, he said that he was going to get in contact with one of the judges there and um let them know what it happened and i'm still waiting to hear back from you well i doubt that the judge is going to call you if it was a judge you're going to have to reach back out to them so um it i mean i think you already know this and it sounds pretty clear from what you're saying that you're still suspended um the goal here is to try to get your license back so that you can have valid driver's license, Mr. Williams. Um, yeah, it's been hard trying to get right. to without driving. I don't have a car anymore, but you know, I'm real tempted to buy another one because it how hard it is to get back and forth to work. Then if you do that, what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up getting your suspensions and then we can't work with you to try to get your license back. I understand. That's why I, I'm still car. Yeah, you got, yeah. And so it's showing, I don't see anything that's been paid out of 36 because you still have the failure to comply. I mean, what you need to do, Mr. Williams, is to write down all of your tickets so that I, you can know which ones you're paying. I, um, and look, as you can see, this was before I got in contact with you guys because that's what they wrote on the paper. And, um, this was supposed to be my remainder. Unfortunately, and I can't read all of that, but I, I, understand, I understand what you're saying. It's just it doesn't show up on the screen for us to be able to see it. Um,
Mr. Bannis, does your does one of your interns have the opportunity or ability to, to meet Mr. Williams so that he's here in a driving law license suspended? Your office has not been appointed as of yet. But he's having some challenges figuring out how to get everything paid and 36th District Court is having some difficulties. I know that you can't represent him out there, but you can have someone potentially walk him through what is showing on those papers that he has because he's been making payments. Um, but I think he may need some assistance with trying to decipher what they're telling him in, the, in those documents so that he can be able to better argue for himself at 36th District Court. Yes. Yeah. I, ideally, I'd have a copy of that in front of me so I could read it carefully. Yeah. I would adjourn this to give you an opportunity to talk to me about, or if, you know, or someone, oh. or someone else from your office to get. Oh, and I, oh, I'm sorry. To get a chance to talk to him about all of that and try to help him work through it um, at 36th District Court. Yeah, absolutely. So you're suggesting an adjournment so that I can assist him. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, absolutely. And what I'd like to do is, if it makes sense, to put my email again in the chat, maybe Mr. Williams could send me a copy of that document. Yes. That'll work. Or you could call or text me. Uh, Mr. Williams, I just put my, oh, <laughs> there's a typo. Great. It's, uh, I forgot the last letter. Let me try that again. <laughs> Typing too quickly. Washtenaw.org. And then put my cell phone for you there also, Mr. Williams. Okay. Are you able to see all that in the chat, Mr. Williams? Yes. Okay. I see it. Okay. Someone took a screenshot of it yesterday, which really I think was a very smart way to do it. Um, so, Ms. Willenbrain, anything you want to add to this? Uh, no, nothing additional, Your Honor. No objection to an adjournment. Um, as for why this was set for a show cause, I do see that uh, Mr. Williams did not appear on June 3rd. Oh, that's what I didn't write in my file. Mr. Williams, oh. where were you on June 3rd? I was at work. I, I, I tried to keep track of the time for my meeting and I might have been like 15 minutes late, but I tried to get in contact. Well, I was in the Zoom meeting waiting room, I guess, from like 45 to. Go ahead. Oh, I was in the uh, waiting room like the rest of the afternoon because I thought my appointment was at 2.30 or after 2.30, like around the time I'd be getting off. But when I called, I had learned that it was at 10, I think. Yes, it was at 10 a.m. So if you were in a waiting room, um, then nobody else would be there with you, sir. Right, I know. I, that's why I called later that day. All right. you. Um, you almost got a uh, bench warrant that day, sir. So you have to be here, okay? I understand. All right. Um, I'm gonna put it out uh, so you can continue to work with 36 and work with your attorney to try to get these um, matters resolved so you can get your license back. So I'm gonna put this out for just because things aren't moving as fast as I want, I'm gonna give you 45 days to see where you are. Okay, sir? Okay. Yeah, August 19th, 2021 for a status update. Okay. PD Judge, do you think you can make it 60 days? Because I think I have court 
for some different tickets, but it's at 36th District. And I think it's on the 23rd of August. I can give you the August 26th. Thank you. That way I can at least have contact with 36th District. Yeah. And if I can't, you know, figure anything out before then. All right. At 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Okay. Is that too early for you? <laughs> I'd probably be at work. But it's so it's either gonna be nine or ten, which is best. <laughs> I guess it'll be nine a.m. All right. Thank you, sir. That's what time of pack it is. If, as long as you get here before noon, we can see you. So, well, I shouldn't tell you that. I don't know what the doc is going to look like that day, but you see what we're doing right now. Okay. So, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're going to give you a breakout room. Oh, wait. We need to recall the Demetrius Curry matter first. State of Michigan versus Demetrius Curry, 20S00633. Horrible, I'm bringing on behalf of the people. Andrew Vanis, uh, with and on behalf of Mr. Curry, um, and DeMonte Noble also is appearing on his behalf um, per his previous request. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, to complete the allocution, what I'd like to suggest is that either you or I ask Mr. Curry whether he's waiving his right to assert a parental discipline defense, and I believe his answer is going to be yes, he's waiving that. All right, thank you. Mr. Curry, um, you're still on the oath, sir. Are you waiving your right to assert a parental discipline? Yes, uh, ma'am. Yes, to this matter? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. I believe that there's a uh, factual basis for the plea and that it has been knowingly and willingly made. Are you satisfied, Ms. Willenbrain? Yes, Your Honor, the people are satisfied. Mr. Bannis? Defense is satisfied, thank you. Thank you. All right, sentencing in this matter will be on. August 5th, 2021, and that'll be at 10 a.m., sir. You need to make and keep an appointment with the probation department, all right? Okay. And uh, then they'll make a recommendation to me, and you and I will talk along with your attorney and the prosecutor when we get back, okay? Okay, is, is there a number for the probation department? Do you have a 10, sir? Uh, I got another phone, I'm ready. All right, 734-483-7336. Uh -huh. Got it. All right. Call them and then they'll set up a, an assessment for you. Please make and keep that appointment and be back here for your sentencing. Too. Okay. Thank you. Bonus well, continue. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. And you too. State of Michigan. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Banish, you need to go into a breakout room. Mr. <clears throat> Dupree, is that correct? Yes, I am requesting that. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. You want Ms. Mr. Noble going in with you? Yes, please. Mr. Dupree, please make sure that you uh, click the blue button so that you can join the breakout room with your attorney. There is a phone number that has been allowed into the virtual courtroom. Could you please tell us your first and last name? Shaquay Davis. I'm sorry, what's your name? Shaquay Davis. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Yes. Ms. Davis, were you here yesterday? Yes. Okay, why are you um, back here on the criminal docket? Do you have a case here today? I, I think I do. I have a letter in the mail saying a notice to appear. 
Okay. You think you have a criminal case, ma'am? I'm not sure, but this paper says notice to appear. And I know I was just there yesterday, so that's why I, I clicked in today also. You were here yesterday on the landlord-tenant matter, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, we're going to look you up. Give us a moment. Ms. Davis, you're scheduled for a bench trial on August 3rd at 2 p.m. So I don't, I don't have court until August. Right, August 3rd, ma'am, at 2. Well, you don't have court here until August 3rd at 2 p.m. I can't say what you have with any other court. Um, then I just must be mistaken. I thought that maybe I'm reading my paper wrong. This notice could be for yesterday. Okay. So I'm I'm on your docket for August third at two p.m. That's correct, Miss Davis. Okay, I'll be back on August third. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. All right. Bye bye. Bye.
Fourteen B District Court's back in session. Corporal Cause State of Michigan versus LeBriant Dupree, case number twenty FB fourteen fifteen. Laura Willenberg on behalf of the people. Andrew Bannis with it on behalf of Mr. Dupree. Hello, Mr. Dupree. How are you? I'm good, and you? I'm pretty good. All right, today's the day and time schedule for sentencing in this matter. Yes, Your Honor, I have reviewed the um, pre-sentence report with Mr. Dupree. We have no changes to the or, uh, narrative, no requests to change the narrative section. Um, although I should, before going forward, I should note that Mr. Dupree and I did discuss the concerning nature of how we got here today. Um, there was an accident, um, but fortunately it was a parked car with no one in there. Um, but of course there were uh, occupants of the vehicle that he was driving. So I think before you sentence him, he does want to make a statement to you. Um, I am asking that you follow the recommendation. Um, Mr. Dupree does have a stable home and uh, with his girlfriend and there's three children that they're supporting. He's not employed right now, but he's confident he'll be getting back to work very soon. Um, I went through all the bullet points. I believe he understood them. He's gonna comply with them, especially the testing um, and the um, assessment at Don Farm. I also gave him the probation department's phone number so that he can contact them after court today. So I'd ask that you follow the recommendation. Mr. Bannis, um, one of my concerns in going through this report was not just that there were unrestrained children in the vehicle at the time, but that I don't think it was until the assessment that I was able to see that Mr. Dupree had taken responsibility for this matter at all. Um, as I reviewed this uh, police report, uh, initially uh, he was yelling at his girlfriend to not communicate uh, to the police. Um, and he has a right to Fifth Amendment, get that but it was way beyond that um, in this particular case. Uh, there was blaming of some unknown individual who allegedly was driving the car that night. Um, so I hope that you've talked to your client well enough to be able to address those concerns for the court. Uh, well, I didn't to speak with him specifically about those issues. Um, what I anticipate we would discuss, I mean, I, I hear you loud and clear, Your Honor. Um, there was clearly drug use, alcohol use um, that was affecting his behavior. I, I can say, fortunately, I know he wants to talk to you also. Fortunately, um, by the time we got to court, at the PCC, you know, he did take responsibility. I rec having said that, I recognize he got a plea offer, um, you know, and that's pretty standard for us to try to negotiate a use from possession. So at least I can say he, he came around and, you know, pled to a charge uh, at the, at the pretrial, so-called pretrial or PCC stage. Yes. So maybe we should, um, I know he does want to speak with you, so maybe we can see what he says, given that you've mentioned those concerns and I appreciate that. Thank you. And that's why I mentioned them earlier on. So he can know what the court's concerns are. Uh, Ms. Willenbring. Your Honor, uh, I have reviewed the report from probation and sharing your concerns about this matter, ask that you follow those recommendations from probation. Thank you so much. Anything you want to say before I address your client, Mr. Bannis? Nothing further. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mr. Dupree, how are you? I'm good. And you? I'm good. I'm certain you just heard my expressed concerns about this particular case, sir. Is there anything yes. you want to say to the court prior to sentencing, sir? 
guess you may go ahead i wanted to um let you know um yes i did um have a hard time taking ownership for it when it first happened i um i was intoxicated and i was frustrated about it kind of angry and um wasn't being an adult but i took full ownership now and um I've been doing everything I can to minimize my drinking and not put my um, kids in that type of situation ever again. But I do take full ownership for um, the whole situation. And I've been, uh, I've stopped drinking and things like that to, to keep me from uh, out of situations like that. Um. I'm glad to hear you say that. I'm also concerned with um, making sure that you understand how your drinking and drug usage is a problem. You know, I, I read in your report during the assessment that you continue to uh, acknowledge that your girlfriend has asked you or uh, talked to you about your level of drinking as well. Yes. You know. Um, this could have turned out so terribly different. So it's a bad situation, but given the fact that you had unrestrained children in the car, it could have been so much worse. So I hope that you take this as an opportunity to try to do better for yourself and for your family. And we will try to give you what you need to get there. If if it looks like you're not doing what you need to get done, then I'll have to take other recourse. Do you understand that, sir? Yes. I will follow the recommendation. It is the sentence of the court that you served 365 days in the Washtenaw County Jail, credit for eight days served. The remaining 357 days are suspended. So if you do everything you're supposed to do, then you don't have to do any more jail time, sir. If you okay. don't, then you have to come back and see me and you have 357 days that you would have to do. Do you understand that? Yes. 24 months on probation. I do believe that there was an accident in this case. And as such, um, that plus the unrestrained children requires the need for rehabilitation. Um, as far as the community service is concerned, I wanna make that 15 days of community service. I want you to be able to do what needs to be done. I don't want you to have any excuse for that, okay? Okay. Um, because when you come back, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, then you are going to be looking at jail time. Because I take this very, very Okay? Yes. Fines and costs in this matter for a total of $525. $30 per month for probation oversight fee. You must complete the substance abuse assessment at Don Firm Outpatient and follow our recommendations. Attend the MAD Victim Impact Panel. That can be done online, sir, just like you're on here right now. You can go on to online and do that. I'm, I'm certain your attorney probably told you that. You meet with probation when and where directed. There's no use or possession of alcohol, marijuana, illegal drugs, or paraphernalia, and no being in the presence of anyone using them. There's no use or possession of any firearm, firearm component, ammunition, or other dangerous weapon. Do a drug and alcohol test one time per week, as ordered by the court and probation. Do the attend 10 open 12-step meetings by, by October the 1st. Um, I'm gonna give you until November the 1st, get that done. And then I'm gonna do a review here in 90 days. So Okay. 
October 14th, 2021. By that time, sir, you should have at least seven of those done. Seven open step meetings by then, okay? Okay. Any questions? Um, am I gonna get a list of everything I, I have to do? Yes, you are. You're gonna call oh. Mr. Heaton at the probation department. Do you have his phone number, sir? Yes. Right. Call him today so that you can schedule in, um, a time to sign or he may go over it today with you, your probation contract, okay? Then okay. get a copy of that. All right, sir? Okay. All right. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you, and same to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay. Did I say what time? Not that I know. 10 a.m. for that, Mr. Bannis. We'll send him now. State of Michigan versus Britain Aldrich, case number 21 S0060. Horrible and bring on behalf of the people. Andrew Bannis with and on behalf of Mr. Aldridge, who I believe is present from the jail, or will be. We're getting, we're getting him right now. Thank you. Have you have you had an opportunity to meet with him, Mr. Bannis? Not, not in the past few days, but I, I was actually going to ask for a bench conference to discuss the situation. Thank you. We can give you that while they bring him over.
All right, we are back on the record in this matter, and I've had an opportunity to meet with probation as well as um, the attorneys defense in this case. This is a violation of probation on a number of grounds, including the fact that the defendant failed to uh, make contact with the probation or follow any of the conditions of probation. Um, is what the allegations are after being sentenced on May 20th. The additional um, allegation, and one that is extremely concerning, is that shortly thereafter he had contact with the alleged victim and uh, broke the door down and assaulted her, stole her phone, and damaged her vehicle after he was assaulted. I will adjourn this matter. Uh, because there is a preliminary examination with respect to case number 21 FB 1667 arising out of police report number 20-39217 in order to find out exactly what the result of that is going to be. I will note for the record that this will be the last adjournment uh, of this case um, if it is not reserved at the preliminary examination stage or bound over at that time, the court does intend to proceed with the violation of probation. And Mr. Bannis, you should uh, determine from your client whether he wants to have a hearing or not so that we can get prepared for that um, at the next available court date after the August 5th date. Unless Ms. Willingbring and the prosecutor are ready to go. Understood, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Aldridge, the recommendation on the VOP is a year in jail. It's absolutely not in your best interest to proceed today because we, we want, to, or I want to, um, and the and judge also wants to see what happens at your preliminary examination on July 20th. So an adjournment is absolutely a good thing, okay? Is, is there gonna be any way I can speak to you today? I mean, as far as in a breakout room or something? Um, I can give you a brief breakout room, Mr. Van. It's very brief. Yeah, I was going to say, um, yeah, that's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let me know if you're done. Fine, There is a phone number that has been led into the virtual courtroom ending in 9460. Could you please tell us your first and last name? 940. 9460. It is you, okay, you're well, the only phone number that is not an attorney. Yes. Uh, my name first is and last Brick. name, please. Claudius Britt. I'm sorry? Claudius Britt. One second. Mm. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Your attorney is in a breakout session with um, another individual, so you'll need to hold on until they come back and we'll get your case called. Okay, Mr. Britt? Okay, so how do, how do I work this? I mean, I, I, I don't know how to work this. I've never been in no zone. You just stay there. Okay. I understand. You don't need to do anything until we return. Oh. Okay. Thanks. So we'll we'll Thanks. call you and then you can speak. Mr. Um Noble. Uh yes, Your Honor. Do you know if this is a case that you've already had contact with Mr. Brett on or not? I do know, I believe we tried to reach out. I'm not sure we made contact because Mr. No. Bannis has to file. So, um, no. Mr. Brett, Mr. Brett, have you talked with anyone from the public defender's office yet, sir? No, no, I don't want to talk to nobody. From, all I want to do is make arrangements to pay this. Um, I, it, you know, this I, I caught COVID 
uh, and then I, I, I had to quit my job. So now I'm just getting back right, and I need just 90 days, and I'll have it all paid off. I don't want to talk to no attorney. I don't want to talk to the judge and let the judge know if he can give me some time. That's it. I don't want to talk to Mr. nobody. There's no he, Mr. Brett. There's yeah. no he. As the judge, I am the judge. This is who you're speaking to. Okay. Okay. Because I was told uh, I have a letter here that says the honorable judge, and I'm, I was assuming that uh, it's the same judge that I, I went back in front of. No, Miss Judge Pope has retired. I'm the new judge in this court, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. I didn't know. I'm sorry. I I, I was just going by what um, the protocol is when you have a case, you go back in front of the same judge. And I, I, I'm so sorry, Your Honor. I didn't, I didn't know. Thank you. All right. Since you don't want to have counsel appointed, I will just go ahead and call your case. State of Michigan versus Claudius Brett, case number 18, FB 1680 FY. Laura Willenbring on behalf of the people. All right, uh, Mr. Brett, um, as you indicated before the court had called your case, you hear before a, uh, because you have a balance due and owing of $1,212. I did hear you say you wanna make arrangements to pay. You say you think you need 90 days to do that. That's, sure. that's all I need. Yes, that's all I need is 90 days and I can have it paid off. All right. What I'm going to do is give you a court date after 90 days to come back. So give me about 100 days. So anyway, after 90. All right, sir. I'm going to give you a court date on October 21st, 2021 at 10 a.m. Okay. Is it a walk-in or Zoom? It is. As far as I know right now, and that's still up in the air, it, it will be a, a Zoom. And if you have been paid off, you don't have to appear. Thank you so much, Your Honor. And I, I want to apologize again. I, I did not know uh, that you had took uh, the Honorable Judge Post's uh, position uh, after his retirement. I'm so uh, apologetic for that. Uh, Please forgive me. It's okay. It's it's all right. You didn't know. It's no worries. I just want yes, you to know that women can be judges too. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I am I am <laughs> off all women for, to be a president, to be a judge, to be a lawyer, whatever you uh your desire is, I, I I'm all for it. Uh, as long as you know it's in the right of uh the public's eyes. I, I don't I don't care about that. I, I'm not I don't all have right. that man complex. <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. This has been scheduled to October 21st at 10 a.m., okay? Thank you so much. And everybody have a Take care. Day. Thank you. Yeah, you, you too. Bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be in brief recess until Mr. Bannis returns.
All right, Mr. Bannis, you are back. We can start going with additional cases. State of Michigan versus Q1 Frazier, case number 21, FB 1570. Sorry, William, on behalf of the people. Hello, Auntie requesting permission to appear under Michigan Court Rule 8.120 under the supervision of Assistant Public Defender Andrew Bannis. Thank you. Um, this is the day and time schedule for sentencing in this matter. Mr. Frazier failed to appear for his uh, assessment and he does not appear to be available today. Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. We tried to get in contact with Ms. Mr. Uh, uh, excuse me, I, I told you. Thank you. Yeah, so we tried to get in contact with Mr. Frazier. Unfortunately, we wasn't able to make contact with him. We left a voicemail. So I would request that we potentially adjourn this sentencing to another date so we can try to reach him about his assessment. Any response from the prosecutor? I guess I would just like to confirm that he is not in custody. I see he was in custody as of June 3rd. Um, If he is not in custody, I would like to request a bench warrant. Is he on the custody list? All right. Um, is there someone there from the jail? Washington Sheriff's Department? Yes, ma'am. We got Mr. Aldridge still. All right. Mr. Aldridge is done for the day. We've adjourned his matter out to August 5th. I'm trying to find out and just confirm that you do not have a Mr. T1 Frazier in custody. Uh, if you give me one minute, ma'am, I can check for you. Is that the last person you have to bring up to us today? Let me check, ma'am. All right, thank you. Your Honor, if, if helpful, I can represent to you that Mr. Frazier does not come up when I search in X jail. Thank you. That does help. He did turn himself in on June 3rd, according to my file. Man, we don't have a Mr. Frazier in custody at this time. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I think we're done for today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I will note that he had a bond violation early on in this process back on May 14th, 2021. The last I see, which makes no sense, but Bong was denied, which would show that he would still be in custody, according to this file, but he is not there. Ms. Willenbray? Your Honor, I'm gonna request a bench warrant in this matter. Thank you, Mr. Bannis. Or Mr. Noble, sorry. I said, John, I would request that we adjourn this matter to another date so we can continue our efforts to get in contact with Mr. Fraser. Thank you. We appreciate your request. He has failed to appear for his referral for assessment as well as failed to appear for sentencing. I'm going to issue a bench warrant at this time. 10,010%. State of Michigan versus Roger Henderson. Case numbers 18S00039, 14S00012, 13S00568. Laura Willenberg on behalf of the people. DeMartino will request the permission to appear under Michigan Court Rule 8.120 under the supervision of Assistant Public Defender Andrew Bannis. Today's day and time schedule for show cause and failures to appear. It is 
12 20 this matter was set at I believe 9 a.m. The defendant has failed to appear. Yes, Your Honor. We have a, this is a unique situation. We have searched on JIS and we cannot find a phone number or an email to contact Mr. Henderson. And we don't have one listed for him. So we are unable to make contact with him. These cases are older. So I understand that you may not have been able to make contact. We did send um, notice to the last known addresses. Ms. Willenbring? Your Honor, my understanding based on the report is that this is um, a show cause for an outstanding balance. I do see that the defendant has several outstanding warrants as well. Uh, I will leave it at your discretion. The schedule for out of order to show cause for failure to appear in your pay on August 5th at 9 a.m. on all of these matters. State of Michigan versus Kendra Jackson, 21S00024. Barbara Willenberg on behalf of the people. Andrew Bannis. On behalf of Kendra Jackson. Today's stand time schedule for a pretrial in this matter. I do not see Ms. Jackson the present. She has not responded. Your Honor, we've been calling and leaving voicemails. I don't have, uh, I cannot account for her whereabouts today. I attempted to reach her so that we could decide how she wanted to proceed today. Your Honor, given that information that she's not here today and that the alleged BAC is quite high in this case, I am going to request a bench warrant. In addition to that, um, she failed to appear. Um, it appears to be the last pretrial. Here. Back on 223 of 21. She was arraigned in front of the magistrate on March the 17th and given a personal recognizance bond. Uh, I will issue a note on your bench warrant for her arrest, $10,000. State of Michigan versus Ryan Johnson, 20S00266. Laura Willenberg on behalf of the people. Andrew Bannis on behalf of Ryan Johnson. Your Honor, I received the report from probation, um, but unfortunately I was not able to contact my client to review it with him, and I cannot account for his whereabouts today. This is a report for uh, failure to pay fines and costs in this matter. Court's going to set this for another show cause and failure to appear and failure to pay August 5th, 2021 at 9 a.m. State of Michigan versus Tory Jones, case number 19, FB 1680. Honorable on behalf of the people. This is another uh, failure to appear case. I'm um, sorry, failure to pay case. Ms. Willenbury, unless there's an objection on the record for a show cause for failure to appear and failure to pay. No objection, Your Honor. 
August 12th, 2021 at 9 a.m. State of Michigan versus Ronnie McBray, case number 19, FB 1608. on behalf of the people. Andrew Davis on behalf of Mr. Magbray. Your Honor, um, Mr. Mag, I have not been able to reach Mr. Magbray. Uh, I have information from some other cases that he may reside or at least have his mail sent to the Delano Center. I think he is in warrant status in case 21S313. Well, actually he hasn't been arraigned on that yet. So that, that would explain why. Um, he was arraigned on a bench warrant in this case on June 17th and, it, and instructed in order to contact probation by June 25th for PSI. I don't know if he did that or not, but He's not here today. He has not contacted probation for his PSI. Um, and we're back here again. I had said he has been warranted at least one, two. This would be his third bench warrant in this case for failure to appear. I am going to issue a new bench warrant for him. Seventy five hundred ten percent. State of Michigan versus Sherry Sibley, 17 FB 1485. On behalf of the people. Today's stand time schedule for review in this matter. Um, actually, it's a show cause. It says review, but it should be a show cause for a failure to appear at the last review. So it should be a show cause and a review. Oh, okay. It's both, but apparently only shows up one um, in the system. So she failed to appear at the last review. Ms. Willenbring? Your Honor, given that information, I do see also a failure to appear in my notes from in 2018 as well. I'm gonna request a bench warrant on this case. I am going to do a bit torn in this case in the amount of an amount of nine thousand ten percent. State of Michigan versus Latanya Smith, case number 16S00664. Verbal and bring on behalf of the people. Andrew Dennis on behalf of Latanya Smith. Today is the day and time scheduled for a violation of probation as well as a show cause for failure to appear at the last hearing. Ms. Wallenbring. Uh, Your Honor, given that um, this was a, I see this was adjourned one week um, and she still hasn't appeared, so I'll request a bench warrant. Bench warrant to issue. It is also a violation of probation, 10,000, 10%. State of Michigan versus Melissa Smith, 20 FB, 1707, FY. Laura on behalf of the people. Andrew Bannis on behalf of Melissa Smith. Your Honor, um, well, I haven't been able to reach her. We've, we've called several times. 
uh, I do not have a good email address for her. It, uh, and I'm not certain if this is true, but um, did she not complete her PSI also? Um, let's see here. I don't know if I have anything. Nope, the PSI is done. That was done. Oh, okay. It appears, but she does have a bond violation for missing. She has not come, she has not done any of her bond conditions in a while. So there was a bench warrant that was issued for her back on July 2nd already. I'm just noting that she failed to appear today for her show cause and sentencing as well. Bench warrant continue. She already has a 5,000 percent warrant. That's already done. I don't know if there's anything that needs to be done. All right, State of Michigan versus Deja Johnson, 18S337144A. And there are also B and C tickets as well, but those B and C tickets, yeah, never mind. There, all of those cases are called. Or remembering on behalf of the people. And had a warrant um, from May 16th of 2019. Apparently she got picked up and went before the magistrate was given a PR bond um, on all these matters and she has failed to show again. Ms. Willenbrain. Your Honor, given that information, these are tickets. Um, I'll leave it in your discretion. One is a driving while license suspended. And she had the one, two, three, two warrants. This will be the third warrant for failure to appear. We cannot get her before us to actually resolve these matters. I am issuing the bench warrants. 5,010% in each case. Well, actually, the other ones are for these are failure to pay. So. And I have been told that I have to either reschedule them or issue warrants. Rescheduling does not work. So I am going to issue warrants. And ticket number, the B ticket, it will be $351 cash or surety. And the C ticket, it will be $375 cash or surety. And I believe that's our docket. Sorry if I made you late, Ms. Wimbray. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Did we call a case of um, Claudius Britt? Did I yes, miss Mr. That? Britt was here while you were gone. He said he didn't want you. <laughs> wow. Not to think about that. Okay. Well, well, yes, yeah, he, he was here and he did say he just needed 90 days and I gave him that. 90 yeah, days. Yeah. <laughs> it's harsh, Andrew. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad everyone got a good laugh. I'm just, you know, here to make everyone. <laughs> Yes, we, we did take care of him because he said he didn't want to quote upon you. Absolutely. It's just a, essentially a collections matter. So, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.